continuing on with American political attitudes. We've got three cards right now. We're going to finish this up, and then you'll, um, I'm, you're going to have some practice, some sorts, some quizzes to, to make sure you know these. So uh, next one is 4.7, individualism, another core American value, 4.7, individualism. All right, cool. Let's define it, and then we're going to look at each side and try to come up with some examples of politics and how it shakes out in, in terms of positions. All right, so this is valuing individual rights over those of the government. Individual, individualism is valuing individual rights over those of the government. Obviously, on the extreme, you have anarchy, which is that everyone has a right to do anything they want anytime. And then you have on the other extreme, uh, like communism in real practice, um, where the government controls everything and everything you do, and you have no freedom. So those are like the two extremes. And America probably falls a little more in the middle in terms of our fight over um, values. Um, in the, and there's a strong emphasis on individual initiative and responsibility. So we value individual rights over those of the government with a strong emphasis on individual initiative and responsibility. So let's look at how that plays out on our chart here. Oh, sorry. All right, we're going to look at we're going to actually look at a poll first, and then we'll come and show you how American Americans really do value this. So the, this is a question that was a global attitude in 2014. Maybe it's a little different now. I don't know, but I couldn't find a more recent one. It's the percent who say it's very important on a scale of zero to ten to work hard to get ahead in life. So ten is very important. Seventy three percent of Americans believed it was very important. Um, or, you know, had a high level of the belief that working hard was important to get ahead. And if you look at the Greece, it's only 21%. So American political values, just to general, generally, we are much more individualistic and believe that hard work is a key. And it's very important. And that goes with liberals and conservatives. Um, and also look at this. Republicans are far more likely than Democrats to say people are rich because they worked harder and that people are poor due to lack of effort. So you look, why is a person poor? Um, either lack of effort or circumstances beyond their control. Um, liberals, heavy, heavy, heavy say circumstances beyond control. That's why you're poor, 70%. Whereas Republicans, only 31% say circumstances beyond uh, control. And then Republicans are much more likely to say lack of effort is the reason that you're poor. Um, why is a person rich? 62% of Democrats believe you had advantages. That's why you're rich. Whereas 71% of Republicans believe that hard work is a reason that you're rich. So these are like really fundamental different views of um, hard work and individualism. All right, so uh, let's just finish this out. So th this is this is kind of obvious, right? Liberal left side, individual needs government help to overcome circumstances. So because Democrats believe that you don't get rich necessarily through hard work, um, you need government assistance to help you. Conservatives believe that if you have hard work, the American dream is attainable. So there's much more belief in the individual. Um, and, and conservatives would probably emphasize that the need for stable families as well. That's why they like the solution is is always some sort of family sort of uh, you know family values, if you will. All right, emphasis on family. All right, cool. So uh, emphasis on government on the liberal side, emphasis on individuals and families on the conservative side. That is, individual, is individualism. All right, 4.8, limited government. Limited government. And you're going to see once again that what is emphasized by the different parties is very different, obviously, because they just in, just that's the point. And here's the thing. I think – at least if I'm living in a country, at least in the country that I would like to live in, <laughs> I would like a country that lives in that just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean you have to hate their guts and they're evil and they're either a communist or a Nazi. Um, it is possible to just understand that people's philosophies are very different and that doesn't make them evil. That makes them not agree with you. Um, and so again, understanding this hopefully brings in a level of tolerance that actually leads to um, compromise that is needed in our political system in order for uh, any sort of bill to get passed that's for the public good. All right, so that's kind of just a little, little uh, rant right there. All right, um, so what does limited government mean? Um, it's restrictions placed on the government 
to protect individual rights and liberties. So these are restrictions placed on the government to protect individual rights and liberties. The Bill of Rights was written not to give you rights. The Bill of Rights was written to restrict government from violating them. That's a, that's a fundamental kind of American difference. We, our rights don't come from government because if they come from government, they can be taken away. Our rights come from nature. We naturally have them. Remember we talked about natural rights in unit one. Um, they come from God as written in the um, uh, Declaration of Independence and therefore government cannot violate them. So we got to restrict government. So what does what do liberals you know um, emphasize on this? They they emphasize the rights of abortion, abortion rights as a right the government can't interfere with, um, criminal rights you know protecting the rights of people that have been accused as they go through um, the criminal courts proceedings, and then also there's uh, another right that uh, physician assisted suicide. Although I will say that's becoming more. Um, it's becoming more uh, supported by conservatives as well as as we move on. But that's an example as well. Physician assisted suicide is something like someone gets a choice if they have a terminal illness and and they want medicine in order to end their life. That would be something that um, they should be allowed to do. All right. So that's an individual choice, individual liberty. Uh, conservatives have a different set. Um, if you've been around conservatives, their, their emphasis is on religious liberty. So that's a really big one for someone who's a conservative is their rights to worship God in the way they want. Uh, gun rights is a huge thing on the conservative side. And then also, lastly, education choice that like people, if, you're, if your school system is not good, you should have the right to go where you want. Um, and so that's a big thing too. All right, so there's just some examples of like what each side supports. Lastly, rule of law. Rule of law. And this is just kind of the idea that like no one's above the law. Examples for this are, are a little bit hard for me to come to. I, I tried to come up with something that, um, you know, helps you understand the, how they see the rule of law differently. And so I, I came up with talking about um, undocumented immigrants. So backside flip. Um, and the idea is that government is based on a body of law that's applied equally and fairly to every citizen. Government is based on a body of law applied equally and fairly to every citizen. Rule of law. And on the liberal side, they are not quite as strict about rule of law when it comes to immigration. Um, for instance, they support widespread immigration and amnesty, meaning like you get forgiven for undocumented, also called illegal immigrants. So if someone can't came to our country without, um, you know, they have not applied for a, a green card um, in order to come legally and they, they just come across, um, they either come to the United States and then stay, overstay a visa, which then they're undocumented or they come across the border illegally. Um, then the idea is that they have amnesty. And so the law um, applied is not applied uh, necessarily as strict. Whereas a conservative would say they only support legal immigration. Like you stand in line, you know, you apply to the United States. We have a list. We have a way of, of, of deciding when you come and you come only when we say it's okay. Um, we're not going to let you just come and stay if you want to. Um, and that amnesty is not fair because you broke the law when you came here. So it's not fair. So this just kind of shows how like conservatives are much more strict, I guess I'd say, on the idea of rule of law, at least particularly when you're looking at, uh, you know, immigration. Uh, that said, I think that if you watch politics very often, you will often see that when one of their party members or leaders um, is in trouble, the liberals will, uh, liberals will, you know, uh, avoid the rule of law, and the conservatives will do the same thing when their person has committed something badly. So partisanship certainly plays a role in here. How much you emphasize rule of law? All right, cool. Uh, hope that helps. Uh, you got to practice and uh, do the sort and keep track of of the beliefs between the different political parties. Thanks, guys.